It says he swims at a speed of three miles an hour and attempts to swim due east. So he is trying to go straight across like this, okay? Um, east, right, so we're going this direction. And then it tells me that um, the river's current flows due south at a speed of four miles an hour. So the current's doing this right here, and that's definitely not to scale because I drew my three way too long. All right, um, so we have this guy here. So he's doing this, current is doing this, and what they're asking for is what's happening here. All right, I don't think you should even probably need a calculator here. This is a perfect triple. He's going that fast, right? Because um, it's pushing him, okay? Um, that's not the only thing they're asking for. They did not say his speed. They actually said his velocity. That's a really important term because remember we talked about that velocity includes speed and direction, all right? And so um, they said measured from the shore. So we're going to assume then, based on my drawing, that the shore is right here. So we need to know what this angle is, all right? Basic Sokotoa is going to give me that little teeny tiny angle. We know that this guy here is 90. And so if I use any of them, inverse tangent. So if I said the inverse tangent then of 4 over 3, uh, that's approximately, what, 53, and then add my 90 to it. And that will give me both. He's going 5 miles an hour at 143 degrees. Uh, dot products. So <clears throat> we looked at some of the things we can do with vectors. We added and subtracted them. <clears throat> um, and now we're going to do something called a dot product. Um, there are actually two different ways to find dot product. The first way that we're going to talk about is um, this way, using cosine here. Dot product, two vectors. So we have u and v. It is denoted with u dot v. All right. In prior pre-cal world, that would mean multiplication. Okay. But when you have a vector, uh, we're not talking about just multiplying the two vectors. You, you end up, like the other way that we're going to do it, when you have component form, you actually do multiply the pieces in a certain order, almost like you would with matrices. But um, it actually is different than just straight up multiplication. Okay, So if I were just to tell you to multiply u and v, I wouldn't put anything in between them. So that's kind of why we've moved away from that when you have two variables. All right, when you have two variables, that's not usually how you write it when you're talking about multiplication. You usually just put uv, okay? So when you see in the pre-cal world this little dot, it means the dot product. Um, you take the magnitude of the first, you do multiply it by the magnitude of the second, and then you multiply by the cosine of theta. In this case, you have two different vectors. So technically, you have two different thetas. When you're talking about theta and the dot product, you are talking about the angle in between the two vectors, all right? So the cosine of theta here is the angle in between the two vectors uh, when they are placed in standard position. So that is important, in standard position. So let's look at this first example. Not difficult to find these. Um, they have given us u and v, and they've actually given us the magnitude of u and v. And then they have shown us <clears throat> uh, for v, the direction or the angle here is 30 degrees. For you, the angle here is 150. If I'm talking about in between them, I literally just subtract. So in between them, I should have an angle of 120. So this is my theta that I'm going to use. All right. And then I'm just going to plug it into this formula. I'm going to say the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of my theta. And I actually think this works out perfectly because cosine of 120 has a beautiful little thing. It is negative because cosine of 120 is going to drop you off in the second quadrant, right? So it is going to be a negative right there. But you should get um, 6 times 4 times negative 1 half, and that gives you negative 12. That is your dot product.
So we're going to use the first one when we already have their magnitudes and when we have their angles. If we don't have their angles in standard position, it's, you're going to have to do a lot of calculating back. <clears throat> so if you have them in uh, component form, if you have them in the XY form, then there is another way to do this. So let's look at where they get it from. So let's say I have the same two. I have U and V. But now I have them, instead of magnitudes, I have them in component form, which is U1, U2. All right? Now, we know that to break that up, right, in, from component form, it's basically just the magnitude times cosine, the magnitude times sine. That's what that X and Y represent, right? Magnitude times cosine, magnitude times sine. That's how we go from magnitude to component form, right? And I would do the same thing for V. If I have V with these two um, elements here, then the magnitude of cosine and the magnitude of sine is how I would break that up as well. So then if I have the dot product here, what I'm talking about is the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V times the cosine of the difference between the two angles, right? That's what we're looking for. Well, we're going to actually use the sum and difference formula. So let's pull back from chapter five. All right. If I have the cosine of two angles subtracted, I can break that up into cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. Yes. Cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. Remember? Cosine of A minus B is cosine of A, cosine of B, plus sine of A, sine of B. Right? All right. That is one of our, one that we used a lot. Sum and difference. Okay. So then this is all multiplication here. So if I were to distribute this group to these, it really doesn't matter where I put it in here. So it's going to be UV times these guys and UV times these guys. So I'm going to put them with their corresponding. U times the cosine of UV cosine of V plus U sine of UV sine of V. Right? Everybody see that? Now, what is U cosine of U? Well, that's the X value of component form. So U cosine of U is the X value of U. V cosine V is the X value of V. Similarly, U sine of U is the Y value of U, and V sine of V is the Y value of V. So if I have it in component form, my dot product ends up being what happens when I multiply the two X's plus multiplying the two y's, all right? So if I have magnitude and angles, I'm gonna use my first way, magnitude times magnitude times cosine of the angle, the difference of the angles. But if I have component form, I'm not gonna go back and calculate my magnitude and try to figure out my angles. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing when I have component form is I am multiplying my x's, adding to multiplying my y's. So if you have it in component form, you can go straight to the, the same dot product as if you had had their magnitudes and angles, all right? It's going to give you the same number. So let's look at this example. Find each dot product, and they've given me three different vectors. So the first one they want me to do is P and Q. Well, I just found out that to get the dot product, I can take the X values and multiply them and the y values and multiply them and add them up. So if I'm doing p and q, I'm gonna say zero times two plus three times four. So my dot product here is going to be 12. All right, let's do the next one. I have qr, so I'm doing q and r. My dot product here is going to be two times negative two plus four times one. All right, so Negative four plus four, that's going to give me a zero. All right, and let's look at the last one. S and R. All right. So I have um, one times negative two plus negative three times one. So I have negative two plus negative three, I have negative five. All right. <clears throat> Now let's look a little bit at these and see what's happening here. I have P and Q, so that's these right here. P and Q, all right? What is my angle measure here between these two? What do you think that's going to be? Is it going to be zero to 90, 90 to 180? 
90 maybe? Yeah, it's gonna be acute. We have an acute angle here, right? Everybody agree with that, all right? What about this one? So we have Q and R. So we have R and Q. If you were just estimating that, you would guess a right angle, right? And then let's look at between S and R. S and R. Probably obtuse, all right? So this pattern will continue for all of your angles between vectors, all right? Possible values are positive, greater than zero, zero, or negative, less than zero. When it is positive, so when you have a positive dot product, your angle is going to be acute between zero and 90. When it equals zero, your angle is going to be 90. It is perpendicular. And when it is between 90 and 180, it is going to be, uh, when it is negative, it will be between 90 and 180. Okay, so when it is negative, it will be between 90 and 180, all right? So you can actually tell a little bit about the angle between the vectors based on your dot product. Based on your dot product, you can tell a little bit about your angles. couple properties of dot products. <clears throat> it, there, you have commutative works when you're doing dot products. It doesn't matter because inside there, you're multiplying and adding. So the order that you do it in doesn't matter. You're going to be multiplying the same two and you're going to be adding the same products, right? So you can do the dot product in whatever order you want to. You can have an outside number multiplying it. Now, I want to point out the difference between three, two and three here. Um, you have a dot product here <clears throat> between the sum of two other vectors, okay? So that is a vector, 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 and there is addition here. This works just like distribution. You can do the dot products between the first and add it to the dot products between the second, or you can add them first and do the dot products between them, okay? That is basic distribution. This is not distribution. People want to do this all the time. This is a, multipl this is a dot, so think of it like a multiplication, okay? So... You can do the dot product and then multiply by a scale factor, or you can multiply it once. This is not distribution, okay? If you multiply it in there twice, you've actually mul multiplied by k squared, okay? So you've multiplied by k and k. That's not correct. So if you have a, a dot product in the parentheses and a, just a scale factor on the outside, you only multiply that once. You can either multiply it through to one of them and then take the dot product, or you can take the dot product and then multiply your answer, but you don't multi multiply each one of them by the factor. You have then multiplied it twice, okay? That's different than having something like this with a sum first and then a dot product on the outside. Zero times your uh, or dot product of a zero vector and a vector is going to give you zero. Dot product between two is going to give you the magnitude, magnitude squared because if you think about what the dot product is, it's going to square them individually, okay? So if you were to take the components that are the same exact components and multiply them, right, that's going to give you the same thing. So you can take the magnitude of the one and just square it. The fifth property provides another way to express the magnitude of a vector. All right, so the magnitude of a vector, we have this is the same thing as the square root of the magnitude magnitude, which is the same thing as the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared, which is what we've looked at before. So. Two ways to look at the same thing. Obviously, if this is a guy is the square root of this, then you can just take the square root of the square, but that's weird to me. Angles between the two vectors then. So let's say I have the two vectors and I wanna find the angle between it. I can actually use the dot product to do so. So let's look at this. The dot product of the two vectors, the first way we defined it was the magnitude times the magnitude times the cosine of the angle between them. So if we are solving for the, the angle between them, we can just divide out the magnitudes. So if I take this way of finding dot product and divide both sides by that cosine of theta, or sorry, not by the cosine, I'm get signing, there we go, by the magnitudes, I'm gonna get cosine of theta by itself, all right? 
So given two vectors, I can use the dot product to find the angle in between them. All right, this is gonna help us with word problems, all right? This is gonna help us if we have the two magnitudes and we need the angle in between it, we can use the dot product to find it, all right? So all I did was take our original dot product and divide it out, solve for cosine of theta. I got that by itself instead of the dot product by itself, all right? Which means in this situation, I need the dot pro I need the magnitudes. I need to solve it that, that way. I need to solve it with your component form, all right? And then solve for the magnitudes. So let's look at how we do this. Find the angle in between it, all right? So I don't know the angle. I cannot use my dot product that uses the angle because I'm trying to solve for it. So I'm going to say, well, the cosine of theta should equal the dot products multiplied together. So dot products there uh, over the magnitudes. All right, so dot product over magnitudes. So I do need to know my magnitudes of each individual one. They didn't give it to me, but obviously I know how to solve for it. So the magnitude of P is just going to be the square root of the oh, elements see. squared. So zero squared plus three squared. So my magnitude here is just three. The magnitude of Q is going to be the square root of those, two squared plus four squared. That is square root of 20. Um, we're gonna be putting it in decimals. If we weren't, I would say, you know, two square root of five, right? But you can leave it as square root of 20 because we're gonna be S, we're gonna be rounding this. So don't bother simplifying if you don't have to. All right. So now I'm going to have um, the dot product. What's the dot product? I need that as well. Well, the dot product is going to be my x's multiplied plus my y's multiplied. So my dot product is 12, and I have everything I need to calculate the cosine of theta. What am I solving for? Theta. So what do I do in my calculator? Inverse. So I'm going to put all of this in the inverse. So I'm going to say the inverse then of the dot product, 12, over the two magnitudes multiplied, 3 square root of 20. And I'm going to put that in my calculator and approximate it 26.6. Degrees. The next one. For this one, if I want to find my dot product, I'm going to take my x's and my y's. I'm going to get a dot product of negative 5. I'm going to do the same thing with magnitude. My magnitude of R is going to be the square root of the sums. Magnitude of S is going to be the square root of the sums. And then I am going to do um, my inverse cosine. All right. And you should get, what do you get there when you do that? Considering what we just talked about, that they're always positive, I just put it back up there. So if it's positive, you have an acute. If it's zero, you have a 90. If, you, if it is um, negative, you have an obtuse, all right? You have a 90 to a 180. Um, then something else you can look at with dot product is, are they perpendicular? Well, you'll know they're perpendicular if they form a right angle, okay? And so our dot product will tell you if you have a right angle. If you have a right angle, your dot product will be zero, 
All right, that's what we said. Zero gives you a 90 degree angle. So it tells you something else about those. It tells you that you have a right angle or a right triangle. And then all of a sudden your word problem may become a little bit easier if you know for a fact that you have a right, right angle, right? So um, there is a specific term for this. Two vectors, U and V, or, are orthogonal if and only if U dot V equals zero. So it is a special term for two vectors that have a dot product of zero. It's orthogonal. Orthogonal and perpendicular are interchangeable here. So if they are orthogonal, the vectors are perpendicular to each other. Um, the only exception is if you have a zero vector. So if you have a zero vector, it's going to zero out with everybody. All right. And so a zero vector um, is orthogonal um, with any other vector. It has no direction and cannot be perpendicular to another vector. So um, it's going to have, it's going to technically be orthogonal, but that is not a time when you can interchange with perpendicular. And so if it asks this question, um, then they are trying to figure out every single vector that is perpendicular to it. So we are going to, kind of like we did in um, trig when we had uh, a reoccurring angle and we said, oh, well, it is pi times that angle because it's going to occur at every 180 or it's 2 pi. So every loop, you're going to have this angle, right? N times 2 pi or something like that. That's what you're trying to do here. You're trying to figure out... Um, when you could potentially have an angle that is perpendicular to it or a vector that is perpendicular to it. So they've given us one and they want us to write kind of an equation for every single vector that would be perpendicular to this. So we're going to write this out um, with another vector. So we're going to say we're going to take this vector that we don't know. Think of it as variables. V1, V2, those are my X and Ys of this vector. And I am going to find the dot product. Well, to find the dot product, I take my x's. So my x's are negative 6 and v1. I add it to my product of my y's, 4 and v2. All right? That will be the dot product of any v vector. Okay? These are variables. Well, if I want to figure out if it's it, where these are perpendicular, I'm going to set that equal to 0. Right? Because that's what that means. The dot product should equal 0. And then I'm just going to solve. So I'm going to add my V over. And then I'm going to divide out. So V2 over V1 should equal 3 halves. What does that mean? Well, every one of my X's I can multiply by a factor of 2. And every one of my Y's I can multiply by a factor of 3. And that will always give me a dot product of 0. Why? Well, look at this guy. Right here. Negative 6 times 2. Negative 12. Plus 3 times 4. 12. So no matter what my x's and y's are, this represents all of them that are perpendicular to that guy. That represents all of them that are perpendicular to it. And so you can just basically... Take those two, find the dot product, and then set it equal to zero and solve for a ratio. You've created a ratio between them. So I can say, well, any k times this 2, 3 ratio is going to do it. It's a constant. So I can multiply by 5, or I can multiply by 6. Anything that I'm multiplying by will give me that vector. Any variable, and it's going to do a dot product of zero. Okay. 